Hello, my name is Garrett Campbell and I'm a software engineer on the Visual C++ team here at Microsoft and welcome to a year in review, Microsoft's latest CMake improvements in Visual Studio and in VS Code. To start, we'll give a quick but exhaustive overview of all the features that we've added and things that we've changed in Visual Studio and in VS Code. We'll start with Visual Studio. We've added awareness of CMake project information to Copilot. We've updated our CMake presets version support, supporting versions 7 through 9. We've added support and insertions of CMake versions 328 through 330. We've also added the ability to use the debugger working directory support. This allows you to set your debugger working directory for when you're debugging a CMake project after setting this property. Some single file compile improvements, and then also adding CMake debugging support with the CMake debugger in Linux. In our other IDE, VS Code, we've released three major versions over the past year. 118, 119, and 120. You'll notice that in each of these releases we've made a lot of improvements, so we'll only call out a few notable changes. In 118, some notable changes are support for CMake presets v7 and v8, improving the project outline view, and also updating our CMake quick start experience to dynamically create presets files for you. In 119, we added a setting that provides more control over the use of a Visual Studio developer environment, enhanced our validation of CMake presets, and also did a large batch of bug fixes. Lastly, in 120, we added support for presets v9, and we also added support for CMake language services built in into the extension. Now, we'll do a couple demos of just a few of the updates that we've made over the past year. Specifically, we'll demonstrate the CMake Copilot awareness, presets version updates, our CMake language server support, project outline updates, the added debugger working directory variable, and some updates we've made to our CMake tools documentation. Here, I've opened up a new CMake project to show off some awareness that Copilot has of the CMake project. So some things you might want to be aware of when you're interacting with Copilot about your CMake project is things like what generator you're using, what CMake version is available to you for what is installed from Visual Studio, what minimum CMake version is required because most CMake projects, and I actually show you here in the CMakeList.txt, have a minimum version required for this project. And so we can ask Copilot these things because Copilot is aware of this CMake project's information. So for example, if I asked what generator is this project using, And then if I ask what version of CMake is this project using. And I can also ask what is the minimum version required. And so that's just a small taste into what is available with Copilot and the knowledge that it's aware of. And so you can expand upon this to ask any questions that you need to um, including things like how you can interact with various commands based on the versions in the CMakeList.txt. Here I've opened up a very simple CMake project, one that simply prints out Hello CMake to the terminal, and I've used the File New CMake Project template provided by Visual Studio to open up this project, and so I've already got some configure presets preset up for me. And so you'll notice I already have the things that are included for, from version 7 here in this file. The first thing is the PM macro, which is, allows us to reference an environment variable from the parent environment and expand it into this include field. So this will expand this test environment field to what it's set from, which is the directory of the CMake presets file. And it'll include this include.json, which simply just adds a couple of additional configure presets to choose from. So if I save this, and we'll notice that it configures once this info bar goes away, you'll see this included preset available to be selected. Additionally, we can add this trace object, which when turned on and given a format, it will add additional trace output to your configure process, which is a lot makes it a lot easier to trace through your CMake configure and understand what might be going wrong. So if we look at the output that came from the last configure, you'll see all this additional output, which can help you debug and understand what's going on with your CMake process. Get that out of the way. Additionally, if you switch to version eight, one thing that's available, is the schema field. And this allows you to specify a document against which to verify this CMake presets file. We've actually already got this set to what we want it, so we won't utilize this, but that's what it allows you to do. And then in version nine, you'll notice that we're actually allowed to use any macro that isn't referencing a specific preset in this include field with version nine. So instead of PM in some test environment macro or environment variable, we can actually just say something like, Founder, 
and this will allow us to reference this file dir macro, which expands to the current directory that you're in with the presets file that you're using, and it will do the exact same thing with a little bit simpler mechanism. And so I'll open this configuration dropdown again, and we'll still see this included preset preset available. To demonstrate our new CMake language services support and our CMake tools extension, I've opened up a popular open source CMake project, OpenCV, which is a large open source um, computer vision library. And we'll start to look at this CMake list and show off some of our features. So we've added colorization. And so you can see here that there's colorization that makes it a lot easier to navigate this file. So you can see the commands colored in one color and variables in other, et cetera. Additionally, we also support um, built-in quick info information. So if I hover over this include method, for example, you can see load and run CMake code, you can see the description. And then lastly, we also support completions. So if I say add and start typing, you can see that it gives you all kinds of options to be able to provide completions. These completions are supported for, and quick info, are supported for built-ins that come with CMake. We are planning work in the future to add this for any functions that you create yourself or customize things you add to your CMake files. Staying in the same open source CMake project, OpenCV, we can look at the project outline updates. So once CMake is successfully configured, we can then go to the CMake sidebar view, which has the project status view, the pin commands, and the project outline view, and take a look. So as you can see, OpenCV is the name of our project, and so we have a top level folder here. If we were to add another folder to this workspace, it would be able to be viewed in a secondary folder here. So this makes it a lot easier to navigate per project. But if we look through all the different targets, our listed in a top level view so you can look through and see all of your different targets. This very closely mirrors the Visual Studio experience. And if you open one of these, you can see all of the different CPP files that are referenced, as well as the other targets within this project that this target references. And this makes it a lot easier to view your project outline um, and your targets than it used to be. For comparison, I've opened up an older version of the CMake Tools extension. This version is 117.17. And in this version, the project outline is just slightly more conf confusing to navigate through. You can see that there's all these different top level folders, it seems, and um, they aren't exactly clear whether they correspond exactly to a target or to some uh, opaque folder. And the newer version is just a little bit easier to navigate through and we're excited about the updates. To demonstrate the debugger working directory variable that we've added to CMake, I've opened up a very simple CMake project that has a main.cpp file that simply grabs the current working directory from the current path using the std file system and then it confirms that the working directory is equal to this c root directory root drive and then it simply outputs the working directory is blank which is either right or wrong depending on the debugger working directory that was utilized so to actually make our and utilize our debugger working directory we go to the CMake list.txt where we've defined our executable the executable's name is main and we call set target properties main, and then we add debugger working directory, and we set it to the root directory of the C drive. And this debugger working directory variable was um, inspired by CMake already having a VS debugger working directory, but this was specific to the Visual Studio generator. And by adding, we upstreamed work to Kitware, and by adding debugger working directory, this is a more generic field that can apply to any generator. And so if I open the CMake presets.json, you'll actually notice that we're using Ninja right now for this example. So if I save this CMake list file and then run the executable, you'll notice that it outputs that our working directory was what we expected. And to prove that it's working, if I modify this to say that we're expecting to be in a test directory and run it again, you'll see that it's saying that it's wrong because it was expecting the test directory, but we still have it set to our root drive, which is what we specified in the cmakelist.txt. Another thing that we've updated that isn't code-based is actually our documentation. We've put a lot of effort into making sure our documentation is more easy to read, but also easy to navigate so that when you come to our repository to maybe look at present issues or see what's happening recently in the product, you can easily find what, you, what you're looking for. So we've updated our readme to be a lot more visually appealing, and more than that, be a lot more easy to access. So you can see here at the top level, the main features that we have supported, and you'll notice the CMake language, service, language services and the project outline here, two of which I've demoed in this um, video. And then also some steps for setup installation 
And then if you're looking for the docs, it's easily found here. And then this gives you a large list of how to um, find various docs on what to do. Uh, for example, if you're looking for presets, you can come to UC Make Presets and it will give you all kinds of information. And we are committed to making sure our documentation is not only correct, but easy to access and easy to navigate so that you can understand how our extension works. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this year in review and please try out the CMake experience both in Visual Studio and in VS Code and let us know if you have feedback.